So, if you happen to have missed the last 400 News at Kate's, here's a little recap. The Tories are awful, they're consistently awful, and they are predictably awful. The question we really need to be answering is why the heck does anybody still vote for them? And the answer is because they manipulate public opinion through the media, and the media doesn't stop them and doesn't challenge them and doesn't ask the hard questions. And right now, there is an absolute case study going on. So the London mayoral elections are coming up, and the Conservative Party candidate is Sean Bailey. Now, I have previous with Sean. I met Sean in 2010 when I was asked to host the Hustings in Hammersmith, and he stood as the Conservative candidate to become the MP for Hammersmith. And I had this idea that what I would do to make politics fairer and more right is when members of the public asked questions about policy and opinion. Before I posed them to candidates, I would first of all ask them a fact-based question on a related subject. So if somebody said, what is your policy on unemployment? I would say, before you answer that question, can you tell me what the current rate of job seekers allowance is? Something like that. And Sean Bailey did not know the answers to any questions at all. None of them. He didn't know any of those things. The other candidates were mixed. Some knew some, some knew others. Uh, Andy Slaughter, who eventually won that election for the Labour Party, knew basically all of them. And it made him look pretty cool, while it made Sean look pretty stupid. Now, after that event, Sean's agent came up to me and said, so, you work for the Labour Party, do you? And I was like, no. I don't work for the Labour Party, I don't belong to the Labour Party. Like, and if you think that facts are somehow the property of the Labour Party, <laughs> I mean, that sort of says a lot about you, doesn't it? Facts should never have a political aspect to them, right? It's not like blue and yellow make green. <laughs> and that fact is brought to you by communism. It doesn't work like that. Although if you remember the coalition government, you'll be well aware that what blue and yellow make is yet more blue, loads of blue, blue coming out of your ruddy ears when the last thing you wanted was blue. And yes, Nick Clegg, I'm still angry. So here's the background on Sean. Here's what I know about him. His big thing is that he founded a charity called My Generation, which is supposed to help people from council estates, from difficult backgrounds to get into work and help people get off drugs and get their lives together. Right, brilliant idea. And this was part of David Cameron's big society. It was a big feature of that. And the whole idea was that the government shouldn't be doing these kind of things, helping people out. Society needs to come together. Society needs to come together and help each other and support each other. Which is so weird because once upon a time society did come together and what we did was we agreed to all pay tax and that that tax would go to an elected government who would spend it Solving some of the problems in our society? I don't know, it's this wacky idea that we had. But anyway, we don't need that sort of big society. We need a different sort of big society. And Sean Bailey and my generation were a part of it. Apart from, there were some problems. So the Charities Commission couldn't find where £16,000 had gone at the My Generation organisation. And in 2008-2009, um, half of the charity's money was spent on publicity and administration and of the remaining half another half was spent on travel and subsistence so only a quarter of the money going to that charity was actually going into supporting projects directly and i am not somebody who who is angry that just giving took a fee when they were processing captain tom's donations i think charities should take an administrative cost out of donations and should pay their employees a wage that they can live on should promote them when they get the opportunity, when they've worked hard, should be able to hire top chief executives who can reasonably expect to command a wage, because I think charities should be brilliantly run by people who are brilliantly compensated for it. And I don't think anyone should be told you have to work for free if you work for a charity. But nonetheless, if your charity spends three quarters of its money not actually doing the things that it's supposed to do, but on publicity, you've got to wonder, is it a charity or is it a publicity organisation to promote Sean Bailey. And interestingly, around the same time that that all happened, Sean was also involved with the Centre for Policy Studies. And that's a right-wing think tank. It was founded by Margaret Thatcher and some others. And he was helping them to produce papers. And I've had to look at some of these papers. They're available online. And in them, he says vile and obnoxious things about single mums, about young women growing up on council estates. He says things about the black community that I am really, really uncomfortable with, horrendous stuff. Things that if Diane Abbott or 
or anybody on the left said it, it would be all over the tabloids. Um, and yet, he's barely been called out on it. He's barely been challenged on it. And in fact, I found one interview where somebody did ask him about the thing that he said about teenage girls on council estates. And he went, oh, it was just chat. And the thing is, it wasn't just chat, because if it was just chat, it would have been sent to the Centre for Chat Studies. But it was sent to the Centre for Policy Studies. So you must have known that this was going to, a doc- to go into a document which would be used to shape policy. And I mean, even, I mean, like, A, the, the idea that I can just say sexist, racist things in chat. No, you shouldn't be saying those things anywhere in our society. That's, this is... This is not the way that we should be living. But also, if you really believe that chat and casual conversation loaded with stereotypes and negative attitudes is what should guide policy, like, that's horrendous. That's not how these things should work. We should be looking at the facts and the data and the nitty gritty of it. It tells us so much about who this man is and about who the Conservatives are. Now, his website, which has his manifesto for becoming Mayor of London, contains six pledges. And none of them run to more than two sentences. And when you click on them, they don't open up a list of data or detailed policies or anything like that. They link to a list of newspaper articles that have mentioned them. So they're literally saying, we don't actually have thought through policies. We just are trying to generate some media spin. It's frightening, isn't it? Really frightening. Now, what he has done during this campaign is focused on two things. First of all, he's been talking to the media and saying, If you elect me mayor, I will end HIV transmission in London by 2028. I mean, which is an an admirable cause, right? Who wouldn't want that? That's something that, of course, everybody would be behind. Now, bear in mind, though, that Sadiq Khan has already pledged to end HIV transmission in London by 2030. So he's actually just sort of playing name that tune with ending HIV transmissions. You know, the Lib Dems should come out and be like, well, I'll end HIV transmission by 2026. Well, I'll end HIV transmission by 2024. And then eventually the others will all turn around and go, end HIV transmission. It doesn't... You can't just say it, right? So there has to be policy behind it. And I've looked into it. Here's his policy. He's going to use his mayoral allowance of Transport for London advertising, or some of it, to encourage people to go and get tested. And the thing is, that's already been done. That has already been done. People who are likely to see an advert and go, oh right, I didn't realise I could get tested, I'll go and do that now, they are already aware of that. And we've made great inroads into slowing the transmission of HIV. And if we are going to actually end it, we now need a really nuanced, detailed policy that looks at deep-seated homophobia in certain pockets of society and people who feel they're not able to come out of the closet and people who are living their lives in secrecy and therefore are afraid of going and getting tested and who are not getting good access to information that they can use to go and get support and you know also testing right the way across the community including people who are not in at-risk groups and therefore may not be being as careful as those who know they are at risk. The other thing we can and should be doing is encouraging the use of PrEP. So there's a drug called PrEP, you take one tablet a day, and then even if you have unprotected sex with somebody who is infected, your chance of catching HIV from them is is reduced by more than 99%. It's an incredibly effective drug. And only a few years ago, newspapers like the Daily Mail were referring to it as a lifestyle drug, and criticising the provision of it on the NHS by saying, oh, who's going to lose out? People with cancer, children with congenital conditions, which totally misunderstands and puts us in this ridiculous position of feeling like one person's vital life-saving drug must be taking someone else's away. And it's absolutely not true. And if we've learnt nothing from watching It's a Sin, it is surely that we cannot turn to the Conservatives and expect them to have a nuanced, compassionate, thought-out policy when it comes to an issue like this that has sensitive overtones, that has issues at the heart of it that they are historically awful on. And if you're not even going to address that, oh, I'll just whack up some adverts. It's meaningless, isn't it? At the start of this year, it was the government's policy, thanks to years of campaigning, that they were going to ensure that funding was provided for anybody across the UK who wanted to be on PrEP. And that funding was delayed because of COVID and we now have no date for when it's coming through. 
But let me just be clear, clear, clear. Um, if you're watching this and you're thinking, I didn't know about that drug or I wasn't clear about that drug and actually maybe I should be on it, go to your GP or your local sexual health clinic. You can still be put on it. It's just not as easy as it should be, but go and ask for it and you can be given it. It's not a question of, uh, it's not a question of it not being available, it is. And in fact, the more people go and ask for it, the better, great. Um, next, the other thing that he's doing as part of his campaign is he's putting letters through people's door that look as though they're from City Hall. They've got a City Hall logo, this one at the top, it's not the real City Hall logo. It's not the official logo, these are not official letters, it's made up by him and his cronies on Photoshop, as far as I can see. And if you haven't got your readers on, you'll be unaware of what it says at the bottom in six point font, which is that these letters were actually produced by Sean Bailey as part of his mayoral campaigning effort. These letters claim that if you live in London, your council tax is gonna go through the roof because of actions taken by Sadiq Khan. And that is hugely, hugely misleading. The reality is this, when the pandemic struck, Transport for London lost a huge chunk of its income because people weren't travelling. And they did all the sensible things. Yeah, they encouraged people not to travel because it wasn't safe. They told people only, only go on the trains if it's essential. They said if you can walk, if you can cycle, do that instead. Avoid the trains, avoid the buses if you possibly can. And what they didn't do was they didn't slash services because they knew that if they cut back on services, that would force people to not be able to observe social distancing. And those who did have to go to work, like key workers, would be forced to get to be close together. They also brought in extra sanitation, they brought in hand sanitizer at stations, they brought in extra cleaning staff, they did all kinds of stuff to keep us safe. And as a result of their continued efforts, one of the side effects of the pandemic was that one of the worst death rates from COVID-19 has been among London bus drivers who put themselves on the line continuing to run services in order to keep key workers and the rest of us safe. And so Sadiq Khan asked the government to bail out Transport for London. And the government offered them much less money than they needed. And most of it came in the form of loans and not grants. And it came with a bunch of conditions. And one of those conditions was that the government would no longer fund free travel for um, children and pensioners. And that if Londoners wanted free travel for those, they would have to fund it some other way. And Sadiq Khan decided that he wanted to keep those benefits available. I mean, A, because it would have looked terrible for him and really affected his chances of being re-elected if he didn't and B, because it's the right thing to do. And some of that will be passed on as a rise in council tax and other bits will be salvaged from elsewhere across budgets and scrambled together. So there is a council tax rise coming, not because that's what Sadiq Khan has chosen, but because that's what the Tories have forced on London and have forced on Transport for London, because the other alternative was that they were going to force young people and pensioners to pay for their travel, which is something that I'm very proud we're not going to be doing. And yet these letters, they're just, they're just a lie. It's just nonsense. And many of the newspapers have just regurgitated this as though it's a fact. Khan plans a huge rise in council tax. It's absolute nonsense. He's doing everything he can to prevent that from happening. And these letters are completely dishonest and it's absolute bullshit. And we need to somehow have a system where the Conservatives are not allowed to manipulate public opinion like this and potentially leave us on the point of electing somebody who doesn't even know what the rate of job seekers allowance is and is absolutely bloody rubbish and doesn't have any real policy it's all just chat and flim flam and unsubstantiated it's just appalling and I, there isn't a magic answer um please fund my videos because i will go and do this research and i think it's important please share my videos send them to your friends and um, click follow click subscribe um, you can go on Patreon and just click follow. You can go to my website and give me your email address and I'll let you know what, when I've made new videos and what's coming out and find other reliable news sources that actually do the research and swat up on them and tell people because we have to do better than this. And obviously, don't vote for Sean Bailey because please, please, becoming Mayor of London is where Boris Johnson started. See you next week, guys. Sorry this is such a long one. It was just a lot to say.